السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد أهلا وسهلا ومرحبا بكم I welcome my dear brothers and sisters in Islam to the continuation of our A to Z series and the topic of discussion the A to Z of marriage and divorce Walhamdulillah Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, what are we talking about? What are we discussing? We're going through the alphabets A, B, C, D, up to Z, but discussing the matters related to marriage, the matters related to within the home, relationship between husband and wife, maybe relationship with regards to the in-laws, insha'Allah. We're discussing etiquettes, adab, advices. We're also discussing the fiqh and the masail behind these matters, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, ponder over this example. Our father, Adam alayhi salam, where was he? He was in paradise, subhanAllah. He had everything that he could want. Imagine paradise, that's where he was. But he was alone. He had nobody else to share this paradise with. He did not have his Hawa. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for him this spouse, this wife, this companion, Hawa, then Adam alayhi salam was complete. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah. That's the example of our father and our mother, Hawa and Adam alayhi salam. So just like that, the rest of us, we require companionship, we require someone to spend our life with. You might have a sister, she might be paraplegic, she might be in a wheelchair, but even the sister, she has this desire that I wish I could get married. Even if it is to somebody who is similar to my situation, at least I have this companionship. Someone I can sit, someone I can talk to, someone I can spend my life with. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, those of you who are married, it is a ni'mah, a bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just like we have to give thanks to Allah for the bounties and the ni'mas, give thanks to Allah for that ni'mah of being married. How many a brother, how many a sister out there? Unmarried, and they turn to Allah and they make dua to Allah that oh Allah, please grant us spouses. You've already got a spouse, walhamdulillah. Look after that spouse and make the best of that marriage, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. In our previous episodes, we discussed A. A was for Allah. A was also for abstinence. A was for age. B was for, unfortunately, bad breath. B was also for the blessings of marriage. C was for contraception, permanent and temporary, we discuss. We moved on to D, D for diamonds. And as they say, diamonds are women's best friend. We discussed D was also for divorce. We mentioned super important, subhanAllah, three things to remember. Haram, haram and haram. To divorce the wife more than once. One time does the job, there's no need to divorce her more than once at any one time. It's haram to say I divorce you two times. I divorce you three times. Haram to say, I give you three talaqs. Haram to say, I divorce you two times. All haram. One suffices. Number two, the two matters with regards to time. It is haram to divorce when she is menstruating, when the wife's menstruating. And it's also haram to divorce her in the clean period that you were intimate with her, in the clean period that you had slept with her. So subhanAllah, the cycle of the female made up of two, when she's menstruating and the clean period. Haram in the menstruating time, haram during the menses time. As for the clean period, if you slept with her during that time, the clean period, then haram to divorce her during that clean period. That is haram, haram and haram. Whether it's valid and it's counted, that's a different mas'ala. We discussed with regards to F, F was for a foot massage, super important in any, in any marriage. We move on with regards to the letter F. What else begins with F in terms of marriage, brothers and sisters? The matter of the first night, 
We began a little bit of that discussion and we said that a super important night in any marriage. We said that many a times there's a lot of pressure on the couple that they have to consummate marriage on this first night. No pressure in reality. It might have been a long day, might have been a very tiring week. They could just go to sleep without any consummation. If they want to consummate, mashaAllah, tabarakallah. We said that etiquette, the husband puts his hand on the forehead of the wife and he makes that dua that we are all familiar with. Walhamdulillah, someone had mentioned, he says, you know, there was a brother and he made a mistake. He put his hand on the forehead of the wife and he recited, Subhanalladhi sakhara lana hadha wa ma kunna lahu muqrineen. Like, glory be to Allah, the one who has, you know, sakhara lana hadha wa ma kunna lahu muqrineen. That in reality is the dua you recite when you board the bus, when you are driving your car, when you get into the plane. That's the dua for safar, that's the dua for travel. With regards to full intimacy, then the husband should make the dua Allahumma jannibna shaytan wa jannibi shaytan ma razaqtana and the wife should also do the same they should pray two rakahs of salah together that's highly recommended some of the sahaba would practice upon this we also know that from the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that it was coincidental maybe on that night of his marriage someone had brought some milk and so he offered his wife this drink if your wife's thirsty mashallah if she's not no problem at all. With regards to the matters of intimacy, then everything is permissible between husband and wife, except two matters. Allah does not go into intricacies with regards to this matter in the Noble Quran, nor did the Prophet wasallam say, you're allowed to do this and allowed to do this and allowed to do that. Rather, the Sharia works from the other angle, will give you what's impermissible and everything else is halal and allowed, inshaAllah. What are the two matters which are haram? The first one, and that is intercourse while she is menstruating. Intercourse, full intercourse while she is, while she is menstruating, haram. Allah states in the Noble Quran, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْمَحِيضُ قُلْ هُوَ أَذَا فَاعْتَزِلُ النِّسَاءَ فِي الْمَحِيضُ That it is harm and stay away from that area at the time of menses. So that's out. The second matter which is totally haram between husband and wife, that's the matter of sodomy, that's the matter of anal intercourse, totally haram between husband and wife. Prophet ﷺ, he states that whoever does this, then he's disbelieved in what the Prophet ﷺ has brought. And numerous ahadith on that topic. Just ponder, Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, if Intercourse with the wife when she's menstruating is haram because at that time there is food there. How much more at a point, at an area, at an exit point where there's food there at all times? Shouldn't it be haram to a higher level? No doubt about that. Everything besides that, totally permissible between husband and wife as long as there's mutual agreement, inshallah. So the matter of sodomy and the matter of intercourse while she's menstruating, these two are haram between husband and wife. Everything else upon the general rule of permissibility, insha'Allah, and mutual agreement, insha'Allah. F is also for fatherhood. SubhanAllah. A man's life changes when his wife gives birth. No doubt her life changes. She moves on from this female to a mother. She's now entered motherhood. And as for him, he's become a father. How many a times maybe Ahmed, you know, he's married, but he's here, he's there, he's everywhere, spending late nights here, there, and with his friends. But once he becomes a father, you see responsibility on his shoulder. There is no person that any parent, there's no person in this dunya, in fact, that nobody that you would love, that they are above you, except your own kids. Usually with people, you know, MashaAllah, you must be successful, but as long as I'm on a higher level than you. But when it comes to your kids, they are the only ones with your full heart. You want them to be better than yourself. Once this man enters fatherhood, his life changes, responsibilities. He's much more careful. Before he was bungee jumping, MashaAllah, all bungee jumping no longer there. MashaAllah, now he looks after himself, looks after his family. He has to safeguard them. He has to protect them. He is the father of the home, subhanAllah. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, F is also for a fasq. What is a fasq? Fasq 
is an annulment of a marriage. We have two types of separation. We have, for example, a divorce, talaq. That's one department and it has its rules. Then there's another department of separation and that's a fasq, an annulment of the marriage. Where, for example, one party seeks out, they go to the qadi and the qadi issues his judgment that I separate between this husband and wife. Even though the husband did not divorce the wife, if, for example, the wife has a valid case, then the qadi can separate between both of them and that is a fasq. And there are certain rules and regulations attached to a fasq. For example, maybe the man is impotent. Maybe the man is impotent. And this is the haq of the wife in the marriage that, you know, she has the haq to the matter of intimacy. So if the husband is impotent, she waits, she makes sabr for a period of time, give him a chance, medical treatment. Nothing's working. She can go to the qadi and seek a fasq, seek an annulment of that marriage, insha'Allah. And on that note, bi ta'ala, we take a short break. When we return, we continue our discussion, the A to Z of marriage and divorce with your brother in Islam, Bilal Ismail. Hayyakumullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. the first prophet was a prophet the first one to read and write did God speak to a prophet a prophet in a prison a prophet who commanded the birds insects and animals want to know more join us for stories of the prophet stories of the prophets every Wednesday at 7 30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 10 30 a.m. India on peace TV to ask you about the life of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about the incidents that occurred before his prophethood and in Mecca and in Medina about the names of his loved ones and his wives and his children how much would we be able to know how many incidents have we memorized brothers and sisters isn't it more important that we study the seerah of the most important human being who ever walked the face of this earth join me your host Yasir Qadi as we discuss the most important biography of the most illustrious human being that ever lived, the seerah of our beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Join Yasir Qadi in Seerah of the Prophet, peace be upon him, next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We return after a short break, walhamdulillah. Before the break, what did we discuss, brothers and sisters? We spoke about the letter F in terms of marriage and divorce. F was for the first night. F was for fatherhood. And F was also for a fasq, annulment of a marriage. We move on to the next letter, and that is the letter G. And G is for what? G is for generosity. G is for gifts, the husband wants and the wife also wants. The husband should be generous and the wife wants to see that from him. He is the breadwinner. He is the one who is in charge of that family. And the sister, the wife, she does not want to see from the husband that he is a miser. Before getting married, mashaAllah, he told me that he has this and he will buy this and he will do this and he will take me there. After marriage, all of that's gone out of the window. Absolutely not, brothers and sisters. Rather, we should fulfill our promises and the husband should be generous upon the wife. Prophet ﷺ states, and that's not the only matter, but he did state that even putting a morsel of food into the mouth of your wife, that is sadaqah. Even that act of intimacy with that wife, it is sadaqah. So purchasing her a few gifts, 
buying her something that you've now gone and traveled so when you return back home buy her something that she always thinks and she feels Masha Allah my husband is a very generous man whatever little he might have he still spends on me whatever he can afford he still buys a gift in reality it's not the value of the gift which counts but rather it's the thought that counts inshallah so G G for gifts Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the hadu tahabu that give gifts to one another and this will cause the hearts to come together because no doubt someone gifts you example a million dollars you would definitely love them more than before getting that million dollar check walhamdulillah we move on to the letter H and H is for what? H is for? yes you've guessed it H is for head massage we said that we have a foot massage it has its own letter and now H the head massage with it all resistance crumbles super important in any marriage inshallah and like you know a five second later 10 seconds later 20 minutes later they are back together and all is well mashallah tabarakallah so ya abdallah ya amatallah a head massage super important ingredient in any marriage inshallah h is also for happily ever after that's what they say happily ever after until death do we part huh? subhanallah in reality in the deen of al-islam we do not have any until death do us part rather we discuss the matter of divorce if the couple cannot manage together then maybe divorce is the better option for them allah states in the noble quran if the couple they are poor get married brother but i'm poor i cannot get married brother Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make it easy for you inshallah this is obviously if he can afford the basics with regards to a marriage we're not talking about someone who has absolutely nothing whatsoever that individual has to save up and then get married for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said whoever from amongst you who has the means the means to get married then get married so if for example you know he needs to get married it's wajib upon him you know, he is zina for himself, or she fears zina for herself, they have to get married. If they're poor, Allah will enrich in them from his treasures. And on the other side, if the couple are married and they cannot make this marriage work, they just cannot get along completely, they cannot get along at all, then subhanAllah, Allah states in the Noble Quran that, that if you part ways, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you from his treasures. So when he came to marriage, Allah said, come together and I'll grant you from my treasures. When it comes to the matter of a valid reason for a divorce, Allah says that I will enrich in you from my treasures. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Ya Abdullah, ya Amatallah. As for happily ever after, then inshallah, inshallah. But every marriage will have its ups and its downs. As they say, every bed of roses will also have its, have its thorns. So Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, you go over those waves, you make sure that you, you know, you roll with the punches and you try to make the best of it, inshallah. At the end of the day, it is worth it. At the end of the day, that spouse is worth fighting for. At the end of the day, this marriage is worth it. And those masoom kids, they are worth it, inshallah. So try your level best to make it work bi-idhnillahi ta'ala and may Allah really grant you the marriage which one could say they lived happily ever after insha'Allah H is also for what brothers and sisters? H is also for homosexuality and we know that in the deen of al-Islam and in fact in the previous adyan this matter is totally totally haram Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the noble Quran the story of Lut alayhi salam and his people, the people of Lut, and we know how they were punished. We know the sin that they involved themselves in, besides obviously the shirk that they had done, we know the other sin of homosexuality which they involved themselves in. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, numerous ahadith he mentions with regards to this matter, and thus it is completely, completely haram. If a brother comes along and he says, but I have these desires, you know, I have these desires. I didn't ask for it, but I just have this feeling. We say, brother, not every feeling that a person might have means that it is allowed. 
a brother might want to, you know, commit zina with a female. He's attracted to her, she's attracted to him. Does it mean that it's fine? Does it mean that it's legal? Does it mean that it's allowed? But it's not allowed. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, this matter is totally, totally haram. We move on to the next letter, and that's the letter I. And I stands for what? I stands for the in-laws, or as some call them, the outlaws, unfortunately. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, the in-laws, they are part and parcel of the greater family. It is the marriage of these two families which in reality occurs. That the two families are now merged. Because of this Ahmed and this Sumayya getting married, two families have now come together, insha'Allah. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, remember and remember well that his parents, his parents are noble to him. His parents are important to him. They're the ones who brought him up. They are the ones who brought him up. So for example, that wife slandering and belittling his mother, the mother-in-law, belittling his father, this is not going to go down well. There are certain matters you should overlook. And where there is a valid issue, bring it up in a respectful manner. Bring it up in a manner which is conducive to finding a solution, inshallah. And on the other side, the guy, he has in-laws, his wife's mother, the wife's father, his in-laws, they brought her up. They obviously have her interest at heart and thus he should respect them. When she wants to visit, make it conducive for her to visit her parents and her father and her mother. They brought up this daughter, this diamond of theirs and they trust you, O oh husband. And that's why they've given her in your care. So look after that amana. Look after that diamond of theirs. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah. And advice to the in-laws themselves that this daughter-in-law who has come into your home She's not a slave, she's not a worker, she's not somebody who's there to look after you 24 hours of the day. Rather, she's gotten married to your husband. She's there to serve him. And yes, she will also serve the in-laws up to her capability and her ability. But it's not something to be abused. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, respect, consideration, good akhlaq is what is required when it comes to these, when it comes to these relationships. And all of these relationships, they are liquid. They will have the up times and the down times. It is that each one should respect the other bi-ithnillahi ta'ala. At the end of the day, the person you're dealing with, minimum, they are Muslim. And minimum, they require and deserve the respect that is required and deserving of a Muslim. Walhamdulillah. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, I is also for what? I is also for I. And when it comes to a marriage, it should be we and it should not be I. Everything should not be I think, I feel, I want. Rather, it should be that we think, we feel and we want. It should be a matter of shura that the husband and the wife sit together, they discuss matters, they ponder over something. What decision should we take in this matter? Which school should we send the kids to? They make istikhara with regards to important matters. And then they decide, yes, final decision lies with the husband. He is the head of that home. In every organization, every company, they have the head, they have the managing director, they have the CEO, somebody who runs the show. At the end of the day, the buck stops with him. At the end of the day, he is the final decision maker, insha'Allah. Thus, shura is required and then decision-making, insha'Allah. And the idea of I, 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 that should be secondary to we, 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 insha'Allah. I is also for, I is also for impotence, unfortunately. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, maybe on the part of the husband there is an issue, there is a problem, and thus we would advise the brother to seek medical help because it is a haq of the wife this intimacy, what does nikah mean, subhanallah? And we know N is for nikah, but nikah means the contract of marriage and it also means the act of intimacy. It means the act of intimacy, subhanallah. It is her haq, it is her right, it is something that she came into this marriage expecting and thus, if the husband cannot live up to those expectations, if for example he is impotent, if she is happy to live with that, mashaAllah, tabarakallah, but if she is not, then she has the right of seeking an annulment, seeking a fasq, insha'Allah. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, 
We advise the brother to seek medical help. And there's many, many treatments out there on the market, and he should try that. So we give him time to try that. The Qadi should give him time. If all else fails, then she has that option. The husband could either divorce her, or if he does not want to, she can seek a fasq, insha'Allah, hayyakumullah. And with that, it seems we come to the end of this episode. Allahu musta'an. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, where does the time go? As Hassan al-Basri said, you are only but time. And as time goes, a portion of our lives leaves us. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant khair and barakah to our marriages. Make our spouses the coolness of our eyes and grant us respectful, beautiful kids that live up to what Islam requires from them, insha'Allah. Hayyakumullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Allah, Allah, you are my Lord. I bow to you. Allah, Allah, you are my Lord. I bow to you. Allah, oh my Allah, you are my Lord. I bow to you. Allah, oh my Allah, you are my Lord. I bow to you. Allah.